last uh, talk of the afternoon. I'll welcome, I'll try to get his name right, and I apologize in advance. Aki Puts Jarvi. No, I, no, sorry, I tried. <laughs> he's from the Helsinki University Hospital, and he's going to take us through a journey in APIs in healthcare, in public healthcare. Thank you. Uh, nobody really outside Finland gets it right, not even in Finland. It most, most of the time it's all wrong, so it's, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Even the Finns have a problem with that. So it's just like, you know, I, I'm blaming my parents coming up with the name. However, uh, well, you know, uh, thank you for being here. I'm, I'm the last person between you and, and, and a break or, or whatever things you are having, so bear with me for a while still. Uh, uh, a, w a word of warning, I'm not really... A, a geek like uh, Mikhail here, so I'm, I'm a bit kind of a higher level. So if you know, if you are asking me something, no, no don't, don't ex expect a coherent answer. But uh, this is about Health Village. This is an initiative that was started quite a long time ago. It was 2009 uh, originally, where there was a mental hub, a thing uh, called Mental Hub was established, and it was uh, basically meant for. Uh, who's only of the Helsinki University Hospital. Of course, they have some responsibilities also throughout the country, but basically it was a limited experience. However, it didn't catch up very well in the beginning. It took some time, but then again, uh, somewhere along the line, people started to find the service, and uh, it actually became so successful that they now have an IT psychiatric clinic, which is just doing this. And uh, somewhere around 2014, they were starting to think that, okay, this could be something that we could duplicate this also on the somatic side, so basically physical illnesses as well. So, 2016 uh, was the year when uh, this health village or, or virtual hospital project was uh, uh, started, and that, that became a joint venture between five university hospitals and this Ministry of Social uh, and healthcare, healthcare and social services. That is, uh, they gave some funding to the uh, the project. So this is basically covering now the whole of Finland. So we are up and running, and all the university hospitals are are uh, participating. These uh, all university hospitals have kind of a special care areas that they're responsible. There are hospital districts beyond these, but all of these uh, university hospitals actually do some services for the others. So this is really a nationwide product. Uh, this is just like a background that you know what I'm talking about later, but basically what we have there is we have three layers of service. So there is a public site which is just more or less like information. There, is, there are other sites for healthcare information in Finland as well, but the, the idea here has been all the time that uh, this is something that is really, really understandable. This is meant for the general public, not the, to other healthcare providers or, or professionals. Then uh, on the platform, we also have services for the professionals, which is pretty much like education. Stuff like, you know, uh, how to build uh, electronics or digitized services. And then I think, that, you know, the, the most important part is this e-health services for citizens, which is basically requiring you to authenticate yourself and so forth. We have currently on the public side, we have something like 700,000 page views per month. And we have something like uh, over 100 digital care parts under development. Uh, I would, something like, I think that, that, that is a bit of an old slide. I think that we are closing to 30 care parts. So basically there are 100 in, in various phases of development, but then something like 20 to 30 are currently in active use. And at the time of writing, there were, we had 1,500 professionals using it. and. 25,000 registered patients. So this is basically the framework. And uh, I think that the key issue here, uh, I'm now talking about the, the care path uh, part where you have actually have to authenticate. So the platform itself, it's not really very fancy in a way because it's just like collecting together very gener generic uh, digital services. What is unique is that it comes with a program so that you know, we are teaching the people how to use these elementary basic services to actually create healthcare services out of them. So these are the kind of a 
an overview of the things that you know what you have like workflows and calendars and stuff which is not really very fancy however there are some tools already from the beginning like you know symptom navigators we have some uh, uh, well we are actually now building predictive models but this is this is not something that we had in the very beginning and core thing here is that this has never been really an IT project, so I don't know why I'm talking here, because this is really, a, a, this is a, a kind of a workflow issue, more or less. This is a, a healthcare professionals building services for themselves using digital tools. So, so that is the core thing, and this is also one of the things that what we're trying to achieve is to scale up these services. We are trying to digitalize a whole a hospital instead of just treating one or two patient groups because this is what, what, what we are seeing when I'm going abroad and I'm seeing like you know somebody could be really really good on oncology or, or somebody could be very good in, in diabetes but they don't really kind of a treat the whole you know they don't have the all the patient groups treated so uh, this is basically where we come from now to the parts that you probably w was waiting for. So basically, you know, the technical ar architecture in simplicity is that we have an up a sort of public uh, uh, sub subscription, and we are storing uh, the customer data and the service data to some extent on, on, on uh, Microsoft CRM, uh, dynamic CRM subscription. So basically, uh, Architecturally, this is a combination of virtual services. There are some services that don't really run on, on Microsoft platforms, but they are running on, on Azure servers. Most of the stuff still, however, is Microsoft-based. So we have uh, some uh, SaaS services, uh, but most of the stuff is built on the platform services as well. Internally, it's based on microservices. And I think that, you know, from, from the API perspective, uh, we, we made a decision that the external access will be through an integration hub. And this is basically very similar uh, to what you see elsewhere as well. I, I think that current, the current trend would be to expose the APIs as such to the outside world. But then again, we decided otherwise. We, we thought that in, in this particular healthcare context, it is better to use an integration hub so that we actually expose the data only through uh, FHIR and HL7 standards to the outside world. From our perspective, what it gives us is to, to basically backward compatibility when, when the message, uh, messages are changing, the formats are changing, there are new formats, it is an easy thing to actually also keep the old uh, interface along with the new interface or the new message format as well. Also, from our perspective, what we think that it would not really be a good idea to just expose our proprietary uh, APIs because, well, then all the you know people like Mikael they would really need to you know uh, program a code against that interface instead of uh, using that. Then we can offer them the Fire or HL7 so that they can actually use something that they probably already have implemented. <coughs> So another thing that is important for us is that, you know, in the healthcare setting, you need to have some uh, coding. So what we are trying to achieve, that we are trying to code all the observation and, and medical data in general using uh, medical coding systems like LOINC or, or SNOMED. We got the SNOMED license in Finland just last year. It was actually, we were participating, we, we and uh, a couple of other parties, we were kind of joining forces together and we convinced the ministry that, okay, this is a good idea. Because SNOMED, in a way, it, it is the most comprehensive of these coding systems. It kind of a covers LOINC as well. So I think that this all from the inter interoperability perspective, it is important that we own, not only have standard interfaces, but we also have to have standard coding systems in use. So, uh, I'm not going to dwell too long on this one, but this is just like an overview on the platform services. So, we have this microservices on top of this, we have the symptom navigators which are exposed internally, and we have symptom diaries, we have an audit trail system, online booking, we have uh, web bots, we have waiting time services, questionnaires, but the, the main uh, service is this digital care path, which is actually containing uh, these workflows, exercises, calendars, and stuff. And 
to the outside world, we are using this integration hub. And when we are using, the, uh, using this integration with the other university hospitals and, and probably also some other uh, third parties, we prefer them to have and set up their own integration hub as well. This is not really compulsory, but we'd like to have that set up because then again, uh, problem fault uh, is easily to, uh, the error tracking and, and isolation is easier when you can basically see that where did it go wrong, whether it's the transformation, whether it is a connection, or whether it is the, the legacy access that actually doesn't work. Uh, we also are, we have connected <coughs> to the data lake, so basically all the data that we are gathering goes down to the data lake in, at HOS, which is really good for, for the research purposes. We are doing that uh, in order to secure that our data is kind of a, there along with the other data. We also, I think uh, one of the important things that what we're trying to achieve is that this will be kind of used as a distribution platform for new models. There are a couple of things going on that we're trying to publish them through using the digital care paths. Going forward, uh, the dip, dip, uh, experience on, on the APIs, and now I'm talking about the uh, internal stuff that, you know, how did it go internally? Uh, the microservices, I just found out that the microservices mean a lot of things to different developers. So basically, uh, we have been doing this for two and a half years or so. So now when we look, look back into it, it seems that, okay, the architecture has kind of deteriorated a bit. So that it didn't, doesn't look so clean as it used to be. So the original blueprint is easily lost. So basically, I think that one of the, the messages that I would give to anybody in, in the similar position that I am is that, it's not really a constant, and, and you should not be afraid of refactoring. It's like a fact of life that will happen. If you don't kind of shy away from refactoring, then you are in trouble. If you don't kind of accept the fact that it is next to impossible to be coherent throughout a long development cycle, then you're probably having failures. And, and I think that, you know, like what we're doing as we are refactoring the APIs, they became too monolithic and they, the, the components are too big and now it's from the development perspective, the developers have to, uh, the, their setup is way too big. So it's, it's difficult for them actually. Also, there are performance issues that we found out. There is there's sometimes, uh, you know, you just look, take, a, take the easiest route. From, from the underlying database, you bet more or less like you just share uh, aligned data that, okay, you can, let's take an example that you, you fetch the patient data one at a time. On the UI, user interface, you just, you're interested in a particular group of uh, patients having a, a particular uh, condition. Then again, you know, if you go and, and you know, cycle through all of them, you, you end, end up in a loop. And in, sometimes you end up in nested loops. And if you do it the other way around, if you just use the SQL database for that. SQL databases are built for that, so basically share the results. So that's probably most of you guys, you're probably programmers, so this is elementary. But at the end of the day, we found that these th kind of things happened. They were there, we found in the code, and we had to refactor us of them. So I already talked about uh, external interfaces, and uh, from, 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 the, from our perspective, it seems that Fire is really, really a lot better from HL7. Uh, one of the things that I didn't tell you about is that I'm pretty new to healthcare, so I've been here in HUS uh, just for two and a half years, so earlier on I really didn't know about this message format a lot. But now that I've been looking at I was forced to kind of say that, okay, which way to go? Fire is a lot easier. It's, it's, it's more compact, it's easier to understand, it is more modern. HL7 uh, versions of that, or the old versions are, are pretty complicated to use. However, the integration hub as such is simplifying the matter. And actually, you know, I was listening to Mikhail's speech and I, 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 I must give a, <laughs> I totally agree with Mikhail that I'm, I'm not for this uh, approach with the counter services or, or the local HL7. That I think that we should, should stick with the international standard. We don't really get that much benefit out of making our own national kind of a tweaks into the standard 
it would actually, from the ecosystem perspective, it would be a lot better. It also would, for, from our perspective, we wouldn't need to maintain kind of a local branches of, the, uh, of it. So it's, uh, in that respect, I, I totally agree with Mikael. <laughs> Uh, well, this is just like you know how it's done. It's it's uh, my my slides are always ugly, so I I, I have to apologize. For that. But basically, this is how it looks like from the external perspective. We have the health village applications, we have the APIs. We are then from the integration pub, we are calling them, and then we are exposing them through the Fire or HL7. Currently, we have uh, you know the what we have done currently is that we have IoT systems plugged in, and we have. Uh, electronic health record systems, and, and then we have some third-party applications. But that more, more or less what we try to achieve is, is that we keep it really, really simple. And I think one of the things that I would like to kind of point out is that from, from the pattern perspective, uh, we have implemented a publish and subscribe pattern on, on the integration hub level, so that when something changes in, in Health Village, so we send it away, away to the integration layer, and regardless of whether anybody is interested in it. We just because that is keeping the cost of sending it down. We don't add any business logic whatsoever, even though sometimes you could argue that uh, it's, it's easier to actually enrich the message at that layer. However, then we would actually create uh, restrictions and connections between objects. Now that we just fire it away and forget it, then on the integration hub, that can then, if it needs to be enriched for, for further use, they can call back. But it's not blocking the main thread on the application. So it's like, you know, we can actually share everything because of this pattern. So I kind of like it. The challenges on the healthcare, by the way, how, how much time do I have? <laughs> I'm still fine, okay. So one of the th challenges uh, what we have found, and uh, now I'm talking about being a kind of an outsider and a newcomer in the healthcare, com healthcare community, is that there is really a, a very high data security requirements. And uh, it's also, uh, from our perspective, having this kind of a, uh, all, all the university hospitals together, because they actually are responsible for the data. Also, the logging data has to be locked, but then we have to deliver it to, to the, the respective uh, hospitals. So it's kind of a making it a bit complicated. And also, the problem is that access rights must be enforced, uh, you, know, you know, E to E, which means that, okay, we have to be aware one way or another of the authentication processes at the, you know, the, the user end. And we have to, if, if, let, let's say that somebody is sending us a referral, which is then creating a, a care path. How do we know if, if the person who is actually doing it has the right to do it? And sometimes, in some cases, we don't. We just have to log it. So basically, this is the approach that we take. And uh, we authenticate the applications, but we pretty much have to rely on, on, on the kind of a client end that, you know, whether that they have to take care of the, the usage and, and also the access rights. And one of the things that I would like to highlight, uh, Mikael was talking about using so the PHR, PHR uh, personal health records data. Uh, it's not medical data at that point, but when you're sharing it with us, if, if you would be kind of a con giving a consent to us that we can use it in, in treatments and, and the doctor may be seeing it, if the doctor is looking at it and making a, a, a clinical decision based on your, your kind of a shared data, that no longer is your data. We have to take a copy of it and we have to, uh, we have to kind of a stop there and, and we have to kind of a, it's not something that you can then take back because we have to protect the professional as well. Uh, the ecosystem, uh, I think that the, there are a few problems. I think that, you know, this, uh, from our perspective, I have been basically putting a lot of effort and thinking of basically how do I create an ecosystem in this environment? Because we have to kind of uh, follow a strict purchasing process uh, because we are public. So uh, the, the issues uh, are there. I have to either buy 
or it has to be free. And when, when I buy, there has to be a competition. I can't really, I haven't found a way of a, meaning, a meaningful way to actually, you know, give the, the end users uh, the process, the po possibility to actually decide for themselves. There is one, we are now kind of experimenting with an area, with an application system where actually uh, the application developer is a third party and we don't pay anything. They, we are connecting them, they are doing their part, we are opening the interfaces, and the idea is to actually use this voucher system, which is already there in the Finnish healthcare system, so that basically, you know, the, the patient has the right, if there would be three digital care parts from competing suppliers, they can actually do that and select whichever they want, and they will still plug in into the same back end, so that we would be, our professionals would be using the same user interface. So that is one of the ideas that we're experimenting with, but, but trust me, it's not easy. Uh, okay, well, I'm skipping this. So I'm, I'm just like running through, you know, where we are today. We have now inbound, we are not far yet. We have inbound, we have this wellness data, we have in a connected Apple Health Kit, we have a, a few others. We have also uh, a bespoke integration on, on the quality register. And on the outbound side, we are connected to the Apotti EHR uh, with symptom diaries. And also we have this wellness data, basically this polar withings Fitbit data is also going to the Omakanta that Mikael was talking about. And then we are putting everything out to the data lake. The next thing that we're doing is that we are inbound, we will be adding calendars so that we can other you know, in integrations, they can use calendars, uh, also referrals service query, symptom diaries, all that stuff, and then adding more quality registers uh, and so forth. Uh, on the long run, we will try to expose all the data both ways, but this is really something that you can't do without use cases. You have to have the correct use cases, otherwise, you know, the, the implementations tend to be a bit clutchy. It's not really working like that. So, thank you very much. And we will be present on hymns next week, so welcome there as well. Thank you. That was an extremely complete uh, case. Thanks a lot.